G'day folks, welcome back to my channel. If you're anything like me, you've probably been sitting around staring lovingly at your Volkswagen camper and thinking, you know, it's great and all, but how can I stay fresh and clean, especially on those multi-day trips? Sure, I could just jump into a lake or a river if I happen to be camping by one and freeze my little butt off, or I could have a shower, at the very least, a warm shower. So I've decided I'm going to make a solar shower for my van. So why not go out and buy something off the shelf, I hear you say. Yes, I could. There's a lot of choices out there and I've got quite a few different methods. I could go out and get the Road Shower 4, which is, looks like a great item. But at my end, that's going to cost me anywhere from seven to eight hundred dollars. And I simply do not want to spend that much money on a solar shower. So I did my due diligence. I scoured the internet for all manner of do-it-yourself solar shower builds. And I've decided to go with a PVC style pressurized solar shower. Now I went out and bought all my materials that I believe I need. I think I'm short one item which I haven't yet found which is the pressure valve which I need to pressurize the tank so to speak. And all up it's cost me about $170 and now it's just my time and labor. So I'll give you a basic rundown of the materials I have bought. Let's start with the last item. It's just a coil hose. I think this is 7.5 meters. But the idea is not just to shower with this. I can uh, clean the vehicle or clean some roadkill blood off, that kind of thing, you know. At the starting point will be my filler cap and pressurization valve. And off this end point here, which will be my passenger side back corner, I'll have my tap. Just a simple valve tap, of which I can attach this hose to and shower away. And I've also got my PVC pipe. I have 100 mil, 100 millimeter PVC pipe, and I need a total of around about, I think it was 4.8 or 4.9 meters for the distance that I want to travel. Now this sounds like a lot. The road shower four, for example, is about a I don't know, 2 metre long, 2.1 metre long thing, but it's a much wider girth for a start. Um, and so I needed more length in, able, in order to get the kind of volume of water that I want. And I wanted high 30s. And so I think I end up with about 38 litres. But I'll work all that out later on. I have an elbow here, which will allow it to go around one corner of the vehicle and down the side. Then of course, the solar aspect, I'm going to need to spray it all matte black so that it can absorb as much heat as possible. Now in the middle of winter I don't expect that this is going to get anywhere above slightly warm on a sunny day, but you never know. Uh, it is now currently winter so I'll be able to test it on a sunny day here. Obviously in summer, that water's going to heat up a hell of a lot more. You may need to cool it down. But, the solution of course is to, if it's still a little too cool, just boil the kettle, pour it in, give yourself a bit of warmth. Before I start, I'll show you a basic mock-up that I have with 90mm pipe, which was just lying around the property. So I'll show you that. Okay, so this will be the basic setup. So I'm going to have this pipe begin here and this end will be the T-section where I'll have the filler cap up top and the shower head coming out here. Now remember it's a 7.5 meter hose so I could pretty much probably walk around the entire vehicle with that hose and if I wanted to clean it off or something like that. It'll run to here to an elbow and then run all the way down the front, not quite as long as that, it'll finish no further than the basket rack there, this point here, and that'll be just a sealed end cap 
with no leakage. And that'll be my solar shower. So I think it's time to get into it. Although maybe that could be tomorrow. It's almost dinner time. Good morning everyone. Or whatever time it is you're watching this. Okay, I'm going to get started straight away on the solar shower build. First, I'm just going to start by gluing in my elbow. So I've got my corner determined and I'm going to place that up on the vehicle to determine the length each way of how much pipe I have to cut off. I've cleaned it all up, sanded the surfaces, got my PVC cement. So we're going to get that out of the way right now. Ooh, that's tight. That looks good. There's one. And there's our elbow joined. So we have the pipe temporarily placed in position. As you can see, it's a bit long there. And we've got a fair bit to cut off on this side. You know, some people might point out that that's quite a span there from back rack to the first rack. It is. I haven't ruled out the idea of some kind of support there. Now I haven't yet determined what kind of brackets are going to hold all this up. It's got to be some kind of heavy duty, very solid item. I'm not exactly sure yet, so I'll have a think about that. But I think it's time to get to determining exactly where I want this to end so that I can put my end cap end piece on. Filler cap will be right here. Shower head at the end. Let's do that. Okay. I think that works reasonably well there. It's not in cringe on the windscreen space. In fringe on the windscreen space. How about we go with right there? Texture doesn't work. Now yeah, the texture works. That will be just fine and dandy. Now that we have our two lengths marked out, it's time to take this down and cut them off. Okay, so I've just had to temporarily place this one so that my filler cap is reasonably flat. I'm not sitting on a level surface here with the car, so I'm basically doing everything by eye. If it looks right, it looks right, it looks good. Everything looks reasonably even. And that looks like a good spot. And that looks good. Filler cap is above the bar, not an issue. Kayak will go through the middle. Alright, I'll mark that spot. Take it down again and glue it in. And there we have the basic solar shower set up. End cap glued on, pretty much in line with the basket there. Travelling down the back 
around the bend and across the back. And you know, once it's all sprayed matte black, it'll pretty much blend in with the vehicle. Okay, so mistakes made and lessons learnt thus far. Only one of each. My end cap at the far back corner is just a little too short. The actual screw cap itself interferes with the the uh, roof rack bracket. Um, so I'm going to have to mount that in such a way that I can undo that easily. It should have been poking out a little bit more. So that's the lesson learned there. Take that little bit of extra time. It's sort of quite like, it's kind of like the measure twice, cut once. But, that's done. It's not going to interfere with the function at all. I just have to mount it correctly, that's all. Okay. Time to fit my screw thread that the tap will screw into, into the end cap. I need to place it in such a way that this that this nut doesn't interfere with the side when I do it up. So I just have to come up a little bit. As you can see, the black rubber seal. On the inside, where my black marks are, you can see another internal slightly raised line there. I've got going to be just a millimetre above that so that this washer is screwed flat against the surface. So we want our washer. To basically be in about that posi position. There is also a raised bit in the center there. Could be an issue, however, I do have this clear rubber washer. So I believe that will still seal tight with a nice tight do up of this washer so I just need to mark my center roughly and we're just gonna poke right there should be fine how about a good old pilot hole to begin with We'll screw this onto a spare piece of pot, connector pot, and we shall drill from here. Now we need to get a nice, tight do up of that. I decided to use a little bit of wet area clear sealant on the outside and a little bit on the inside. And I do have that plastic washer under there. Not sure if you can see it. You can just see it poking out and that's really tight. So now, I just have to screw my tap into that with some Teflon tape. 
Okay, we have our cap back on, nice and tight. We've got our tap with our Teflon tape. Let's screw that in. Hopefully I've got the right amount on there. Can I get all the way around to here? Yes, I can. Oops. Have we loosened that? We have loosened that just a little bit. There we go. Our tap is on. We've just got to unscrew this cap again and do a little, little tighten of the nut. The nut came loose just a little bit. Hopefully that'll pass the um, watertight test when the time comes. Well, my brother's cooking a roast tonight, so it's not far off dinner time. I'll get back to this another time. slight change of plan I'd gone ahead and glued this end cap to the front end of the solar shower but I then realized why I had this coupler piece and another screw cap and that was to put on the end so in the event I ever wanted to clean the tube out with a brush or a long brush or even just a high-powered hose I could just take the screw cap off and clean it out it's another watertight one with the seal. So I'm going to quickly cut this glued end cap off and glue this one on instead. Quick clean up! Oops. Squeeze you on. Nice. Still hasn't protruded out past the rack. Sits almost flush with it. Screw the end cap back on. Tight seal, an ugly sticker off. Don't you hate sticky stickers? Sticky barcode stickers. Well, <clears throat> there's no reason why we couldn't conduct a watertight test. too late in the day for that now but I believe that's what I'll do next we'll do a watertight test and see where we failed nine litre water containers that will help me accurately measure out how much this solar shower will take literage wise Probably a good idea to work out the volume of a cylinder to determine how many litres of water I'm going to pour into this thing. If only I had concentrated in school. Okay. Something to do with pi. Pi r squared times the length. Yeah, that seems easy enough. Okay, so it's 0 0.05 meter radius times it by itself times pi times the length 
gives us 0 0.38465 divided by 1000 oops that was times 1000 giving us approximately 3 no 38.465 litres which is kind of what I said in the beginning high 30s let's see if that holds true so the ver first garden water container has a leak at around about the 8 litre point. So that's what I'm pouring in first, 8 litres. Here we go for water tightness. 9 litres, giving us a total of 17. 26 litres. Thirty-three litres and I can see water. So technically I've just got to put another five litres in and this is near full. I'm going to try that. I've got six litres here which would take us over our alleged capacity because it was 38.4, almost 38 and a half litres. Five would take us to 38. So I'll leave a little bit in here and just see whether we get to capacity. So that's 39 litres in there right now. One thing to notice, which I'll show you, is a sag in our long span of unsupported pipe. So that definitely has to be supported. This is almost capacity at 39 litres. Okay, I think I could go 40. But I won't, because it's now testing every potential leak point so far nothing I'm just going to put the cap and leave that for a little while just to double check that we don't have any leakage potential leak point number one not a hint of water let's check our elbow joints not a hint of water. Not a hint of water. It's a bit blurry, but not a hint of water. And finally our tap joint. End cap. Not a hint of water. Everything is watertight so far. Tap turning ceremony. And there's some water dripping out onto my van. But that's alright, it'll have a hose. And so that's with no pressure, of course. There we go. Quite a sunny day. <clears throat> Oh, that's better. I would call that a full-blown success on water tightness. Now I'll show you the sag in the middle of the uh, the long span, unsupported span, where I am definitely going to need support. And that's not a camera distortion. That is a pipe sag. So that needs a solid middle bracket support. Okay, I'm going to turn around this vehicle so that my tap is on the downhill side and drain all this water into buckets. I'll throw it back in the tank. That bucket's full. There we have. 
uh, valve. We're ready for paint. Welcome to the spray booth, otherwise known as my brother's shed. With all its things. Okay, so I'm going to get on to giving all of this big solar shower a light sand. It's either go big or go home, isn't it? Give it a light sand, clean off the dust, and get my first coat of spray on there. Get my first spray coat. On there. Two coats of flat black. Apparently touch dry in 10 minutes. I'll leave it overnight and weather permitting, fit it back on and do the testing process. Final testing process. Doggy on a mission again. Construction is complete, my friends. I'm very happy with the result. So now we move on to the testing phase. I have to refill this now to near capacity. This is a good opportunity to uh, test a winter sunshine situation. So I'm going to get onto that, fill this tank, and I'll get back to you as we begin the testing process. Well that was a leisurely lunch. It's actually been one and a half hours since I filled it and left it in the sun. It has been sunny all this time. The pipe itself is not too warm. Only just a little bit in some spots. Uh, but it is a cool day so I'm going to turn the tap on. See what I get. Well, that would make for a cold chow. Why can't I get this lid on? So after an hour and a half, sitting in pretty much mostly sun the whole time, it really didn't get beyond cool. We are in a very low temperature day, single digits. For most of that time it was pretty much 9 degrees Celsius and I've just literally just refreshed and we're now at 10 degrees Celsius so that is a cool day well while we wait for the Sun to warm up our water why don't we go ahead and test the pressure construction wasn't complete in this wonderful modern age of selective editing, I could present a video that's basically just run-of-the-mill perfect and no mistakes. But I think everyone should own up to their mistakes. I made one major mistake as far as the pressure valve goes. You probably would have already seen that I've placed it at the outlet, the water outlet end. Now all that did was basically force water, once I pressurised, back up through the valve. I may not be a smart man, but I do know how to lift heavy things. So I've rectified that. I had to cut off a little bit of pipe in order to add another T-section to the front of the vehicle. 
which is now my filler cap as well as my valve. Now I didn't film any of it because I was basically too busy trying to work out what I did wrong. So I went back to my source, I went back to YouTube, looked at a couple of videos that I got my inspiration from and realized my mistake of course. Lesson learned, think a little bit harder about what you're doing, number one. And number two, own your mistakes. The world would be a far better place if a lot more of us owned our mistakes. So we don't have to climb up a ladder all the time. I'm going to get elevated and I'm going to run you through the fixing solutions that I've come up with for fixing it to the van. It's very strong. And then after that, I promise, the testing phase. Far too cold to have a shower. I'm just going to spray the hose. Okay, let's show you what I've done here. So here's what I've had to fix. As you remember, I did have just an end cap, uh, but that was my mistake. I had that valve all the way down there where the water outlet is. So I rectified my situation. I went and got another T-section. I had to cut back to here, put a joiner in, that joiner there, little piece of pipe so that I could uh, put this bracket around the pipe and put my T-section on. And so now I have filler cap and valve and clean out end. These brilliant pipe clamps, aluminium, slide onto the bar of the roof rack and super, super strong, super tight. My original idea for the center support was I took one of these spare legs off my spare second roof rack that I only use one on the back and I originally decided to put a half round gutter bracket on it, which I did, and it was up under the pipe. I bent it over a bit more and I fixed it to that. And that's basically what I had, just to stop it from sagging down. But it was still a little bit loose. And then I thought, well, you've got the second bracket. They came in pairs, so why not just use that? And there it is fixed off. And now, super solid, slight movement, but super solid. Moving down to the back, around the bend, I've used a simple steel pipe clamp, one that you screw in tight, wrapped around the bar, holding it very tight up to this bar here. No movement whatsoever, that is super tight. So that's quick and easy to release, and that is so strong it's not funny. To the end, I used a shelf bracket, screwed into the bar, protrudes down here past the pipe, stop it from coming up in any way, and secure it once more with a steel pipe clamp. Again, super strong, no movement whatsoever. This cap is now surplus, it's watertight, but it could be another filler cap or you know, another option for cleaning out. And then of course, my tap. So there's a completed solar shower, installed, ready to go. Blends in well with the vehicle, don't you think? One could be forgiven for thinking this was a factory issue. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. All right, so now it's on to the testing phase as promised. Okay, test number one, the tank is full, no pressure. Right I'll start again. Okay, test number one, the tank is full, no pressure behind it, the front cap is off. Turn the tap on.
not good enough for a shower. Now I've got this handy little, looks like a battery drill, but it's actually a little handheld compressor. Great little item. So we're going to try and pressurise it with this thing first. Turn it on, set for PSI. Here we go. Currently at 8.5. I'm at 15 pounds pressure. I'm using that based on one of my research videos. Uh, another guy did 30 pounds. But the first guy I watched did 15 and he had a really good flow. So I'm going to try that first. Okay, I'm at 15 pounds of pressure. Starting on the jet. Not bad at all. Under the shower. Anyone can shower under that. Let's try the 30. Now pumping it up to 30 pounds pressure. And that's 30 pounds, that was real time. That's how quick that was. Let's see what the hose is like at 30 pounds pressure. All right, we're now at 30 pounds pressure. We're gonna turn the tap on and see what happens there. Major leakage with that pressure. I do have major leakage on this top cap with that pressure. Here we go, I've felt the water come into the hose. I'm on jet stream. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's go to shower. Have a look at that. So that's 30 pounds pressure. Wet yourself down, leave it off, soak yourself up, turn it back on. That's brilliant. So that's a success. Now we do have a major leakage point. You'll see a few tracks of water on there. We've had a little bit of intermittent rain. But that one track right there, this cap is leaking it's been extremely tight with a rubber seal uh, but with all that pressure behind it it was a pretty good consistent uh, drip flow out of there and so being that this cap is surplus if I had have done this correctly in the first place this pipe would have just run straight to this end cap and that could have become a leakage point however that wasn't leaking at all so that was very well sealed. But no matter how tight I did this up, there was still a leak point with all that pressure behind it. So my solution is going to be, I think I'll take the screw cap off, apply the PVC cement to the thread heavily and screw that back on and that is never gonna come off again. But then I'll follow up and use a, a wet area silicon all the way around underneath that cap let it cure and dry and hopefully that will solve that problem however it didn't really affect the pressurization um, I really got great flow and you definitely get a shower or two out of it so it was a leak but it wasn't severe well I got there in the end folks I achieved a pressurized solar shower and 
I think it worked out pretty well in the end. I made mistakes along the way. Hopefully I learnt from my mistakes. I did end up with a leakage point, which I now have to fix, but it didn't really affect the performance of the pressurised water. Uh, I got a really good flow, both at 15 pounds and 30 pounds. The only thing I won't rely on is I won't rely on a battery drill out in the field, something that I may have to recharge. Uh, I will get a 12 volt compressor permanently in the vehicle so I can just run the vehicle for a little bit and pressurise the water that way. But I think I've got a really handy item. I can remove it, it doesn't have to stay on the vehicle. But yeah, I think I've got a really handy item for the car now. And who doesn't like a shower? So that's it folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it wasn't too long for you. If you like this kind of thing, please subscribe to the channel. Like and share, all that business. I don't know what I'm going to do next, whether it be a project or out on the kayak again. Maybe even a work road van trip, who knows. But I'll try to keep the videos coming. Stay well. See you next time.